Pat, were you always a lefty? Let's show some of the yeah, kit here. Yeah, I, I do certain things right-handed. Um, if I pick up a knife and fork, I pick it up right-handed. Okay. If I throw a ball, I do it left-handed. If I throw a bat, I do it right-handed. Really? Bat right-handed? Yeah. Huh? So, um, and I think that helps if you are a drummer that you're not totally one-sided, you know. We have soccer players that can kick a ball with their right foot, but they have trouble standing up on the left one. Right. You know? <laughs> so I think if you do have this this ability to, to share the load. It makes the, the independence thing and, and the fact that you're doing four different things at the same time a little easier to deal with. Uh, not, not, not necessarily a rule, but I think it does help if, uh, if your idiot side isn't quite as dumb as everybody else's idiot side. And I have to ask, because you're always kicking that 26. Yeah. Was that just something you always liked, or you went small, or? Uh, two guys. Uh, I, first, I first saw John Bonham do it. Uh, he was he, before Zeppelin. He was doing a, a pickup gig. He was he was in a band that was providing the music for Tim Rose, country folk singer. And I just heard this massive thunderous noise from the back of the stage. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> and then the fudge came on, and I oh. saw Carman was using these monsters and the sound again. So as but you didn't have the PAs like today, though, right? So back then, you really heard the drum, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. There, there, well, there, you know, there were no mics or anything. You, know, huh. you, you had stacks of marshals, a little PA, and but, a loud drummer. And a loud drummer, right? Yeah, that's what you had. Did you had to compete loved, against the stacks, yeah, right? I loved the sound. And so as soon as I got over here, because I, I knew I was going to see uh, uh, the Ludwig Drum Co. in Chicago, I asked them to build me a kit with, uh, with a 26. Um, I still use a 26 on stage because I believe it gives me a different sound. A sound that uh, is different. It's not that regular 22-inch safe thud. It's it's a bang. It's a cannon. And even here in the studio, I'm using a 24. And I've also gone back to the the classic width of a bass drum. And 14. 14. Um, I reckon those guys spent years getting the dimensions of drums right, and it wasn't potluck potluck that they ended up with these these dimensions. So I've had. 16 inch, 18 inch, 20 inch depth bass drums. And I've always been missing something. And again, I was, uh, we did a gig with Carmine in Radio City five, four or five years ago. And he'd gone back to a 14, he said, listen to this. Oh, that's the sound. That's, that's it. what it was. And you say, well, yeah, you know, saying, we all forget. Right. It was so good then because that, they got it right. right. And now in the, in the cause of business, everybody's trying to do, give the kids something different. Yeah, bigger. But it doesn't actually make it better. Right. So I've gone back to the sort of stuff, the sizes I sort of played as a kid, and they just sound great. Great. They really just smack through. And the distance that the air has to travel between the two heads is less, therefore it gets to the front head quicker. Right. Um, you can see I'm recording with both heads here. Yep. No hole in the drum, no internal miking. It's ju just a drum with a little bit of damping. Oh, that's cool. Being... Hey, it's tuned the same with it. Yeah. Buddy Rich would have tuned the bass drum. Yeah. It sounds wonderful. All right, great. Well, it's an honor to have you part of the Pormark family and make a great record, and we'll see you soon.